Hey, good Tuesday morning. It is September the 6th. This is your 10 a.m. Tropical Update. I'm meteorologist Pete Malone. Thank you so much for watching here as we continue to watch a fairly active Atlantic basin. We're nearing the peak of hurricane season here, which is on average around uh, September 10th. So by this weekend, but things are active out here. And you can see there are four different areas we're tracking. Now two of them have names and two other areas are being watched for development over the next several days into the next five days or so. So let's start with Earl. Earl is the uh, tropical storm that is a little bit closer to land here and could actually be getting closer to some land as we go into the end of this week and towards Friday. It's a tropical storm still now. It weakened overnight. It was looking pretty impressive last night when I went to bed. When I woke up this morning, it had a much broader look to it and it had weakened some. Probably still some shear and dry air got in there, but hurricane hunters have been in there finding that the wind field's a little bit bigger. Probably going to take a little bit more time for it to come together and reorganize and strengthen more. We are expecting this to strengthen though as it moves to the north. So this is heading north. It's moving away from the Caribbean islands and straight due north at this point. And it's going to stay moving north over the next couple of days. Now what you're looking at here is the wind shear and dry air and it really does paint the picture and tell the story of what the shear is doing. You've got this strong uh, kind of trough digging down over the this part of the Caribbean Atlantic. It's putting a westerly shear on Earl. So that's why it's just kind of capped off and not been strengthening much. And there's a little bit of dry air getting mixed in there, but definitely some shear. Now, as we go out in time here with this, as we go towards the Wednesday and Thursday, notice we do have it as a hurricane, and then that's when it starts to approach Bermuda, but make that turn. So all indications are that it's going to start to make that turn before it gets to Bermuda, but it is going to be in close proximity to the island nation by Thursday night into Friday morning. Should continue to strengthen. It'll start to actually interact with an upper level jet as we go into the weekend, and that could allow this thing to become a major hurricane. It would be our first major hurricane of the 2022 season if it does intensify as it is forecasted. So for the um, island of Bermuda here, certainly something to watch out for as we get towards Thursday and Friday. But right now we really think it's going to make that turn. It's just when does that turn happen? What you're looking at here is the current National Hurricane Center forecast overlaid with the wind field from a model. So the model doesn't line up perfectly to the forecast, but it does kind of paint the picture of what could happen with this. So going out in time, anywhere you see the pinks and the reds, those are tropical storm force winds. Anywhere you see yellow or white, those are hurricane force winds. Now notice, as we get into the Thursday time frame, Thursday afternoon into Thursday night, probably going to start to get fairly gusty in Bermuda. And then as it makes that turn, pulls the strongest winds away from the island. So the island itself, if it stays on this track, um, you would have to move the winds just a little bit further this way. The model's a bit further towards the east, uh, but a little too close for comfort, right? So that's why we're saying certainly need to watch this. Uh, and you can see right on the edge of the cone of uncertainty there in Bermuda. So could see some gusty winds, some rain, and some high seas in Bermuda by Thursday night into Friday. When you look at the forecasted wave height here for the Atlantic, notice as the storm gets stronger, the waves will get bigger. And uh, where anywhere you start to see some of those greens and yellows, you're talking waves 20 to maybe 25 to approaching 30 feet near the eye and on the uh, western, eastern side of the storm. Now for Bermuda, could easily see waves topping 10 to 15 feet. So it's obviously uh, going to be uh, some nasty weather near Bermuda as that strengthening hurricane passes uh, not too far away from it. So something to watch if you're watching us in Bermuda or if you have plans to head there towards Thursday and Friday. By Saturday, though, it'll be long gone. Uh, elsewhere, we still have Hurricane Danielle. It is moving east northeast at six miles an hour. Hasn't strengthened at all. It's pr probably done with its strengthening phase here. And then the next 24 hours, it's going to start to weaken. The path of this thing, kind of interesting, does big old loop-de-loo out here in the Atlantic. And then notice it weakens to an extra tropical or non-tropical system and then gets torn apart by shear and the jet stream that it's going to start to interact with. So overall, not anticipating that to cause any big problems for anyone. Now, a couple new areas out in the Atlantic. These are two tropical waves. One is a tropical wave near the Cabo Verde Islands. The other is a wave that hasn't quite got to the Atlantic yet, but could uh, or will in the next 24 hours or so. Now, the front leading wave you see here, uh, I want you to watch what our models do with that one and then watch this space back in here as we put this model out in time. This is the GFS and European models. Uh, overlaid with each other. By tomorrow and Thursday, this leading tropical wave, the one that has a higher chance of development in the next three to five days, could become our next depression or even tropical storm. The next name is Fiona, so we could have our next name storm here. Notice off the map, that's Earl making 
its way through the Atlantic. So there's the front tropical wave trying to organize by Thursday and Friday. Notice coming off the continent of Africa, this is that back tropical wave or the one just now coming off the continent. Uh, that's probably not going to do much in the near term. But as we get into the end of the work week and into the weekend, and even into early next week. We're talking Monday and Tuesday. That leading tropical wave that could become Fiona has already moved to the north, gone out into the Atlantic and dissipated. So it's probably not gonna really impact anyone, it doesn't look like. Now this tropical wave that is further behind, this is next Tuesday. Notice it does show somewhat of a wave feature, maybe a little bit more organized. On the European model, not as organized on the GFS. You can faintly see the red there still in the main development region by a week from now. So we've got plenty of time to watch this one. Some models curve it out. If it probably gets stronger, faster, it'll curve out. If it stays weaker, it may get a bit further to the west. But key word or key phrasing, we got a long time to watch it, and it's no immediate threat to anyone at this point. So we're heading into the heart of hurricane season, the part of it where we see most of our activity, and that's through the middle part of September, and we are to Earl. The next name is Fiona, and the name after Fiona is gassed on, but nothing is a threat to the United States or the Gulf of Mexico as of this morning. Thank you so much for joining me for your Tuesday morning tropical update.